Hi, this is Magdi Isa. I'm your teacher for anatomy and physiology bio 201 lab. This video, just like all of my other videos, is intended to be for GCU students who are enrolled in one of my classes. Please do not share this video with any other student. Today, I'm going to talk about lab 11 and 12, which are basically muscles of the interior and muscles of the posterior. In this lab, in this lecture, um, the PowerPoint and the video will not be as helpful as previous lectures because you need real to spend a lot of time in lab uh, touching the muscles and pinning the muscles and quizzing yourself. So I would encourage you to attend every possible content clinic in order for you to keep reviewing these muscles. Uh, this will be the hardest part of the exam and uh, historically this is where most of students don't do very well so make sure you attend the lab you attend all the content clinics so you can keep reviewing the muscles because the pictures here are not as representative as the other uh, lectures um, it's just this is the way it is so uh, first how do we name the muscles there are different ways of naming the muscles. We can name the muscle based on location, based on the shape, based on the size, and some other criteria as well. So an example of that, brachialis muscle. Where is the brachialis muscle located? Well, just from the name, we know brachium means an arm. So brachialis muscle has to be located in the arm. We can call the muscles based on their shapes. An example of that is deltoid. We know that deltoid muscle is triangular in shape. And we, as we know, the letter delta is also a triangle. So this is letter delta. Next, we have the size of the muscle. So we can call muscle maximus minimus or longus. Uh, an example of that, we have gluteus maximus. We have gluteus minimus. So a gluteus maximus will be bigger than gluteus minimus, which will be the smallest gluteus muscle. Next, we can call muscles also based on the direction of their fibers. Uh, let's say we have the rectus abdominis muscle. So it's rectus, which means that this muscle is standing. It, the fibers go vertically versus oblique muscle, which the, uh, in which the fibers go in an oblique way and transversus abdominis muscle in which the muscle fibers are transverse. We can call also the muscles based on their attachment. So if you hear brachio, radialis, you know that this muscle originates on the brachium, which is the arm. In this case, it's the humerus of the arm. And it's inserted on the radius muscle, uh, radius bone in the forearm. We can also use the number of origin. For example, we have the biceps muscle, bi is two, so this muscle has two heads, triceps muscle has three heads, and the quadriceps muscle has four heads. We can also use the action to name a muscle. So we have a flexor, we get flexor uh, pollicis longus, for example, we get the extensor digitorum profundus. So all these muscles, they have their action as a part of their name so it's easier to identify their action so here are the muscles of the anterior we're going to cover most of these muscles and for the origin insertion and action of these muscles I would like to have you I would like to have you go to my um, handout so I made a handout for you so this is bio lab bio 201 lab 11 uh, and here are the muscles that you need to identify so please make sure that you print out this before you come to lab so you uh, are able to identify all these muscles the things that I have crossed out these are low yield which means that there is a very small chance that you might see on on the exam um, the muscles that are highlighted and, um, and underlined, the uh, bolded and underlined, these ones are uh, the ones that you're responsible for knowing their action, their origin and insertion. And I have made a one page table for you here. So this is what you need to memorize for the exam. So these are the only muscles I'm going to ask you about their origin, insertion and action. 
this comes also from your textbook but it's much much more simplified here so instead of asking you about the exact location of the origin of the sternocleidomastoid on the clavicle I just want you to know for exam purposes that the sternocleidomastoid has two heads one come from the clavicle one come from the sternum and I will be happy with that also here is the action which is kind of very very simplified so that's all what I want you to know so this is this for lab 11 and the same for lab 12 um, I have also crossed some muscles here that are very very low yield you won't probably see these on the exam and I have another one page for you for the muscles that you're responsible for all right so let's go back here so muscles of the interior of the head and neck and face we have to know some muscles on the face not all of them but the most important ones for example we have a muscle that goes around the eye we call this orbicularis because it goes in a circle and we call it oculi because it runs around the eye we have another muscle that goes around the mouth we call this one orbicularis oris because oris is from oral cavity which means mouth when these muscles contract they will close the mouth and close the eye we have also another muscle that can elevate the mouth we call this levator labii superioris it will levate the upper lip superioris is upper and labii is for lip and levator which means elevation we have also muscles that will be depressing the uh, the muscle that will be depressing the uh, the uh, angles so we call this depressor anguli or is because these ones they will depress the angle of the mouth we have other muscles that will elevate the angle of the mouth we call this levator anguli oris here um, we have also um, we have also this muscle here is called platysma we have a big muscle here and very important one this is my frontalis and this muscle makes you frown we have the temporalis muscle here that is attached to the temporal bone and we have the masseter here and this muscle um, allows you to chew food and we have the buccinator muscle which is this one here which allows you to blow out the air and we have also the zygomaticus major muscle which is this one here on the lateral view here it's very easy to identify sternocleidomastoid muscle sterno it's called sterno because it has a head that comes from the sternum clido because it has a head that comes from the clavicle and mastoid it because it inserts on the mastoid process which is a part of the temporal bone here is also natural view you can appreciate the masseter muscle and you can see very well a fan-shaped muscle called the temporalis muscle you can see also the front frontalis muscle uh, which is here it has and this is my occipitalis muscle and between them there is one aponeurosis we call this the epicranial aponeurosis so you can basically consider this to be one muscle we can call it occipital frontalis muscle you can also see here the orbicularis oculi you can see a muscle on the nose we call this nasalis can see this one that elevates again the upper lip we call it levator lipii superioris you can see better here the zygomaticus major you can see here also the buccinator muscle and you can see the orbicularis oris you can see the uh, mentalis muscle which depresses the middle of the lower lip and you can see the depressor anguli oris it's called the presser because it lowers the angle of the mouth next here is a nice slide that comes from um, one of your atlases it shows you a lot of these muscles you have again orbicularis oculi orbicularis oris this is your depressor anguli oris 
this is your um, depressor labii inferioris which is the opposite of levator labii superioris that's here so this one depresses the lower lip depressor is it lowers labii the lip inferioris the lower and you can see also the masseter muscle here you can see the vaccinator muscle here the zygomaticus major muscle here um, you can see the frontalis here and you, the, you cannot see very well the temporalis but it's under this fascia so it's going to be in this area it's under the, the temporalis fascia all right this picture here shows you another view. Um, you can see here the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle. You can see here also the platysma, which is uh, so very superficial muscles that run in the uh, neck and face. Here is a very nice view that shows you the sternocleidomastoid muscle here. There are some muscles of the neck that you need to be aware of. One of these muscles is the sternohyoid muscle. So where did this muscle originate? Well, it's called sterno, so it originates on the sternum. And where does it insert? It inserts in the hyoid bone. That's why it's called sternohyoid muscle. You can see here as well the, um, the gastric muscle, which is this one here. It's called digastric. Di means two, and gastric means belly. So that muscle has two bellies, has one here and one here, and between them there is a tendon. Now we will move to muscles of the anterior thorax. And we need to cover two big muscles here. Uh, we have the pectoralis major. And if you remove this muscle, you can see the pectoralis minor. And also you can see the serratus anterior muscle. So serratus means teeth. So this muscle looks like it has teeth because every one of its origins attached to one rib. You can also see very well the coracobrachialis muscle which is attached to the coracoid process and the brachium. It's not uh, one of the anterior thorax muscles but it's, um, I just find this picture to be the best to display this muscle. If we remove all these muscles, then you get to the deep muscles of the thorax. You have the external intercostal, which run anteriorly and inferiorly. And you have the internal intercostal, which runs the opposite way. They run anteriorly and superiorly. The, for the exam purposes, I want you to only identify the word intercostal, so I don't worry about internal or external. If you write intercostal, you get full points. Next, we have muscles that cross the shoulder joint. We can see very well here the deltoid muscle, which looks like a triangle. Uh, you can see again the pectoralis major muscle, which also crosses the shoulder joint. In this picture here, you can see the deltoid muscle and you can see the pectoralis major muscle. There is a groove between them and there are some blood vessels that travel in this groove. Here is the muscle that cross the elbow and you can see this muscle here, which is your, pec your biceps brachii. Below that muscle, the biceps brachii, there is another muscle called brachialis. So if, if I remove this muscle, or try to lift it to one side you can see the brachialis muscle just below it and you can see also the brachioradialis which starts on the brachium which is the humerus here and goes down to attach on the radial radius here is um, a specimen which you can see here this is going to be my biceps brachii if we move to the forearm we have more muscles there um, we need only to be aware of the pronator teres, which pronates the uh, the uh, the wrist, and it's called pronate. That's what's called pronator. And teres means that it's cylindrical shape. Then we have flexor, carpi, 
radialis. It's so it, we know its function. It flexes, and it um, flexes the wrist joint, of course. And it's called carpi because it's attached to the carpal bones, and radialis because it's on the radial side of the forearm. We have also the palmaris longus. Uh, it's called longus because there's a palmaris brevis. Bravis means short and longus means long. Uh, we're not going to cover the bravis on this exam, but just be aware of that. It's, there is a palmaris bravis. It's called palmaris because it's attached to the palm. Then we have a flexor carbi ulnaris. And then we have flexor digitorum. And digitorum means that it attached to the digits. And superficialis, which means it's superficial. Because, because there is a flexor digitorum profundus, which is deeper. So let's see here some of these muscles. We saw previously the brachioradialis that the stars on the humerus here and goes all the way to insert on the uh, brachialis muscle. We have the pronator teres, which is this one here. It's a cylindrical shape and it's responsible for pronation of the forearm. Then you have the, after that, the flexor carbi radialis, which they all start at the medial epicondyle and they, um, they go to different destinations. So the flexor carbi radialis will go to the radial side. Then you have the palmaris longus, which starts also here and inserts on the palmar fascia. Then you have the flexor carbi ulnaris which is the next one in line, which is that one here. And deeper to them, you have the flexor digitorum superficialis. If we remove these muscles that we just spoke about, then we can see more muscles. So we can see here the flexor digitorum superficialis. So if we remove all the superficial muscles, so we can see this one. You can see also the flexor policies longus. And we call it longus because there is a brevis, it's a shorter one, and this one flexes the pollux, and as you guys know, pollux means thumb. And then you have the flexor digitorum profundus, which is even deeper and deep, deeper, and it goes and also inserts on the digits and is responsible for flexing the digits. So both flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus, they insert into the digits. Next are my abdominal wall muscles. We have four important muscles. One of them, the first one is called the rectus abdominis. So this one goes up like this. That's why we call it rectus because it's straight, standing. And it's in the abdomen, that's why we call it abdominis. Then we have also a, transver a, tra a transverse and oblique muscles, the most outside one we call it external oblique and this one runs anteriorly and inferiorly as if you're putting your hands in your pocket so if you put your hands in your pocket this is the same direction the opposite direction is going to be for the internal oblique so once we cut part of this muscle you can see the internal oblique that's more deep and then the deepest one will be my transversus abdominis, and as you can see, the fiber direction is transverse. Between the two rectus abdominis muscles, I have a white line here, so we call this linea alba. That's why linea is a line and alba is white. Here is a specimen, shows you again the rectus abdominis muscle here, the linea alba here. And the most superficial one is going to be my uh, external oblique. Then I have the internal oblique running in the opposite direction. Then I have the transversus abdominis. Here's another picture that shows you more muscles of the abdomen and the chest as well. Next is are the muscles of the uh, thigh. We have many, so, so many muscles. So let's start pronouncing these muscles first. We have iliacus, psoas major, the P is silent, so it's called psoas major, adductor longus, adductor magnus, adductor brevis. So guess what's the function of these adductors? Well, they all adduct. Which one is the biggest? It's the magnus. 
which one is the longest is the longest and which one is the shortest is the brevis then we have gracilis tensor fascia lata iliotibial tract this is not a muscle this is a, a facial vein we have rectus femoris vastus lateralis vastus intermedius vastus medialis and sartorius these four muscles together are a part of one big muscle which is called quadriceps quadriceps femoris we can see some of these muscles here an example of that going to be my psoas major muscle next to the psoas major on the iliac bone i have the iliacus these two muscles come together and they make one muscle after they cross the inguinal ligament which is this one so we call them iliopsoas muscle and they have one insertion then these are my adductor muscles um, i have the adductor uh, bravest longest and magnus here is another view that shows me again those muscles this is my psoas major and iliacus muscle then i have my uh, uh, i have the rectus femoris muscle which is this one more medial to that I have the vastus medialis and lateral to that I have the vastus lateralis and if I remove this one here I can see below that the vastus intermedius I can see also here a muscle called the tensor fascia latae that's attached to the iliotibial band which is a thickening of the fascia that's around the thigh muscles then we have also a muscle that runs obliquely goes from this point which is the anterior superior iliac spine and inserts medially on the superior tibia we call this muscle sartorius muscle this is the longest muscle in your body then after that we have the uh, adductor muscles that are all of them are going to be on the medial side because they add that to, they bring the thigh medially then we have the gracilis muscle gracilis muscle starts here on the pubic bone and uh, continues medially and it's also one of the adductors on this specimen here you can see the gracilis sartorius muscle you can see three of the quadriceps somoris muscles and you can see another muscle here that makes the floor of the femoral triangle we call this the pectineus muscle next to that you can see the rest of the iliopsoas muscle here is a better picture you can see here this very long muscle it's called the sartorius muscle it's going from superiorly and laterally to inferiorly and medially next to that here you see this one here which is the adductor longus and these muscles actually they make the boundaries of the femoral triangle so there's this triangle here this is my inguinal ligament that completes the triangle the floor of this triangle is made by the iliopsoas muscle and the pectineus muscle in this triangle we have a femoral vein femoral artery and femoral nerve we're not going to cover these two for this exam but we will see um on uh, we'll see when we cover the nerves so we'll see the femoral nerve which is that one next we have muscles of the interior compartment of the leg we have tibialis anterior extensor digitorum longus fibularis tertius and extensor hallucis longus so the muscle that is attached anteriorly to the tibia as you can see here this is going to be my tibialis anterior just lateral to this tibialis anterior there will be another muscle here this is going to be my extensor digitorum longus so this one will insert all the way on all four lateral digits and a part of this muscle 
is will be called my fibular sturges, which is going to insert also on the fifth mid tarsal bone. And medial to the uh, tibialis anterior, we will have a muscle that will go and insert on the hallux. This one will be my extensor hallucis longus. On the lateral side, we have two muscles. We have the fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. These ones in the clinic are still called peroneus longus and peroneus brevis because they pronate the foot. So the peroneus or fibularis longus, this one is very long. It has starts high on the fibula and has a very long tendon that will cross to the other side below the foot here and inserts on the fifth and the, on the first metatarsal. The fibularis brevis is deeper to the fibularis longus and this one here it starts at the middle of the fibula and goes all the way to insert at the base of the fifth metatarsal bone. Here is another view that shows you these lateral muscle, the fibularis longus and fibularis brevis. So now we're done with lab 11. Uh, you might want to stop the video at this point and then next time you can start on the lab 12. So in lab 12 we're going to cover muscles of the posterior. We'll start here from the neck and what you can see here there is a muscle that's called like looks like half a trapezium so if we put the other muscle here that will be trapezium well this muscle is called trapezius muscle if we remove this trapezius muscle we will have three different muscles just below it there is one that attached here and here so it originates from the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra and the, it inserts on the a, a superior angle of the uh, scapula. So this muscle is called levator scapulae because when this muscle contracts, it will elevate the scapula. From the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebrae, I have two muscles. One is called the rhomboid major, and the rhomboid basically uh, makes something like rhomboid shape. And these ones here, uh, they start on the spinous processes, and they insert on the medial side of the scapula. So when these ones contract, they will retract the scapula. If we move forward, we have muscles uh, that, that are called rotator cuff muscles. These ones, they um, they are they kind of support the shoulder joint and make sure that the shoulder uh, joint is not going to dislocate, because as you guys know, that shoulder joint is very mobile, which means that it has very low stability. So if it has low stability, we want to secure that joint. That's why we have these four muscles that are surrounding the joint. So if you have a very vigorous, unexpected movement, these muscles will reflexively contract and prevent the shoulder joint from dislocation. So these muscles are called the sit muscles because they are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres, minor, and subscapularis. So the supraspinatus is the one that takes origin from the supraspinous fossa. Infraspinatus takes origin from the infraspinous fossa. And you have the teres minor here below them. And if we look from the anterior side, so this is an anterior view after we've removed part of the chest cage, you can see the subscapularis muscle which takes origin from the subscapular fossa. These four muscles are really very important to know their names. Next, we have two other muscles that move the arm. These are the latissimus dorsi and teres major. So teres major is not a part of the sits muscle. It's just below the teres minor, and as we know, the teres means cylindrical shape. 
So this muscle is cylindrical. It's called major because it's bigger than the minor. The other muscle here is my latissimus dorsi, which you can see from the back. It's a very big flat muscle here. You can see here your latissimus dorsi on this side. You can see the trapezius here. And if we remove the trapezius from the left side, you can see the rhomboid major and the rhomboid minor. You can see again here the deltoid muscle. Next are the muscles of the fore uh, of the uh, of the arm, the ones that work on the forearm. And we have only two muscles here. We have the triceps brachii and we have the enconius. The enconius, I will not expect you to know this one at all because it's a very small, tiny, flat muscle. But of course, you need to be able to identify the triceps brachii, which has three heads. It has a long head. It has a lateral head, and if we remove this lateral head, we make a cut, you can see below that the medial head. Here is a nice view of the uh, deltoid muscle here, and the, also the triceps brachii muscle. In addition to that, you can see the teres major muscle. Next are the muscles that move the rest in hand. Uh, we have superficial muscles, middle muscles, and deep muscles. And let's just try to pronounce the names for now. We have the extensor carpi radialis longus, extensor carpi ulnaris, extensor digitorum, supinator, extensor pollicis brevis, extensor pollicis longus, adductor pollicis longus. So we have a very nice view here of these muscles. Um, you can see, so this is going to be my extensor digitorum muscle. We have also the flexor carpi ulnaris here, and the flexor uh, carpi radialis as well. Here is uh, the, the other, uh, after we remove those previous muscles, we have the extensor digitorum and we have the extensor digiti minimi, which is for the most part, uh, it's so close to, maybe actually sometimes considered to be a part of the extensor digitorum. So we call this extensor digiti minimi because it's attached to the small digit. In addition to that, we have muscles that go to the big uh, to the thumb, we call these the abductor pollicis longus, the extensor pollicis brevis, and we have also the extensor pollicis longus. Here is another view after we remove more muscles, and now you can see the supinator, you can see also the enconius. Next, we have muscles of the vertebral column. We have the splenius capitis, we have the spinalis, intercostalis and the longissimus muscle. Longissimus muscle is also a very long muscle. It might be the first or the second longest muscle in your body. So let's start finding these muscles. These muscles actually together are called the erector spinae muscle because they erect your spine, they make you stand up. So these are the one that start here, this is going to be my Elio Costalis. It's called Elio Costalis because it starts at the iliac crest and it attaches to the ribs and pertaining to the ribs means costal. Then we have the longissimus, which is going to start here as well and go all the way up to insert some place on the ribs and also on the uh, thoracic and cervical vertebrae. The one that is that's closer to the midline we call this the spinalis muscle. Next we have muscles that move the thigh. Uh, we have the glutei muscles and we have the pyriformis muscle. So this very big muscle that is impossible to miss will be your gluteus maximus. And if we cut this muscle or remove it, you can see below that the gluteus 
medius. So here is a part of the gluteus medius. Here is a part of the gluteus maximus. And if we cut these two together, you can see very well the gluteus minimus. In addition to that, there is the obturator internus muscle. Here is another view again, gluteus maximus, gluteus medius, gluteus minimus. Here is your pyriformis muscle, which, is, which is starts inside your pelvis and comes out to insert in your femur. Then you have below this one big muscle here. This is called your obturator internus. Above this, there will be a very small muscle. We call it the superior gemellus. And below that, there is another small muscle called inferior gemellus. And then you have a muscle that looks like, uh, like a rectangle. We call this quadratus femoris muscle, which is that one. Here is a specimen that shows you this is the gluteus maximus muscle. Here's another specimen that, that is uh, basically a sagittal section of your pelvis. And it shows you the, this muscle here that starts inside the pelvis. This is your obturator internus muscle. Next are the muscles that move the leg. And these are the biceps femoris, the semimembranosus, and semitendinosus. We can see these ones very well here. Um, from in a posterior view, there is one muscle with two heads that will go laterally. So this one here is going to go lateral and has two heads. So this will be my biceps femoris. And then I have two other muscles. Everyone has only one head that will go medially. So these two muscles will be my semitendinosus and semimembranosus. The reason we call them semitendinosus and semimembranosus is because semitendinosus has a big tendon and semimembranosus has a big membrane. It will be very obvious to see these in the lab. Then we have muscles that move the foot and the toes. These are called gastrocnemius, soleus, tibialis posterior, plantaris, flexor hallucis longus, flexor digitorum longus, and flexor digitorum brevis. We can see the sum of these muscles here. So let's start from here. This very big muscle that has two heads, this is called gastrocnemius, and this one is um, inserted into the calcaneus by the calcaneal tendon or Achilles tendon. If we cut this muscle, you can see below that the soleus muscle, which is also a very big muscle, and it also inserts into the calcaneus by the calcaneal tendon. In addition to that, you can see a small muscle that unlocks the knee joint. Uh, when you try to flex your knee, so this muscle unlocks the knee. It's called popliteus muscle or also popliteus muscle. So popliteus or popliteus. Then you have the plantaris muscle, which is a very, very tiny, small muscle with a very long tendon. This muscle, just like the palmaris muscle in your hand. Uh, so you have palmaris longus in your hand and you have plantaris here. These two muscles are very small. Uh, and they have very long tendon and basically these are your spare tendons so if you need any tendon to be transferred to some other parts of your body you can take these ones and you will not lose uh, any function next we have if we remove these muscles and we can see our uh, tibialis posterior muscle the flexor digitorum longus and the flexor hallucis longus so those three muscles are on the posterior of the leg and they're also very very deep. Here is a view that shows muscles again of the posterior leg and I have here my gastrocnemius after it was reflected then you can see the soleus muscle. This is the tendon here um, or a semi-tendinosus muscle. This is my 
uh, calcaneal tendon or, or also called Achilles tendon. Okay, thank you so much for your time and I hope that you had some basic understanding of the muscles. When we are in the lab, we will be able to see these muscles very well. Have a great day.